All right, welcome to this week's module. Article 2 of the Constitution is what we're going to be looking at. Uh, we're going to be breaking down the executive branch, uh, also known as the presidency. Um, everything we're going to talk about today coming straight at you from Article 2 of the Constitution. Highly recommend break out your copy of that and take a look at it, read it. Again, very short, not a whole lot to it. Um, Article 2. Let's Let's take a talk about this. Um, first thing I want you to really think about is, in your mind, why is the presidency, why is this position of president such a polarizing thing in this country? In other words, if you think of a globe, we've got a north and a south pole. Uh, you can't get any further apart north-south. It's how a lot of people feel politically, especially as it pertains to the president of the United States. Uh, why is that? Why do so many people feel so strongly about this position? That's something I want you thinking about. My actual first question, though, is what is the job of the president? What's the role of the president? Um, undoubtedly, as you start thinking about that question, no matter what answer you come up with, um, there are a plethora of different roles, different jobs that the presidency has. Something I want you to consider uh, when thinking about the president of the United States a difference between power and responsibility. Uh, a lot of people think the president has power that they, the, you know, the position just really doesn't have. And because of that, a lot of responsibility is put on this figure uh, that perhaps is misguided, maybe misplaced a little bit. In other words, perhaps the, the position of the presidency has been inflated um, to include things that really don't have anything to do with the position. Let me give you just one example of what I'm talking about. Um, it's not uncommon for presidents to get blamed for things like the gas prices. Presidents don't set gas prices. Uh, presidents have policies that can determine how owners of gas companies want to uh, treat that industry, but they're not setting the price of gas. That's a private company doing that. And yet it's very common to hear people blame the current administration for you know, whatever it is. And gas is just an example. Unemployment rates would be another perfect example of times where sometimes credit is given to someone or sometimes blame is put on presidents when it's not necessarily their fault in the sense that they don't have the power that we think they do to change some of the things that we think they should sometimes. So that's what we want to, that's really, really, really where we want to start. What is the job of the president? What's the role? And as you're thinking about that, we're going to cruise through some ideas. Uh, first thing I want you to do, somewhere as you're jotting notes down, will you please write down the acronym QPOR? That's Q-P-O-R, QPOR. Underneath the QPOR, just write one, two, three, four. Article 2 comes at you in four sections. QPOR, one, two, three, four. First section, are you ready? Section 1, Article 2, qualifications. Who can be president? Um, once again, we have ourselves in a situation very, very vague. The Constitution does not provide a lot of um, details on this. You have to be at least 35 years old. You have to have been born on U.S. soil. You could have been born in another country, but as long as you were on either a naval hospital or you were on an embassy, uh, whatever is uh, denoted as U.S. soil, as long as you were there, you're considered a U.S. citizen. Um, you know, in Mexico, for instance, the Mexican Constitution says if your parents are Mexican, you're Mexican. In America, it's different. If you're born here, you're a citizen. And then finally, the third thing you have to do, uh, you have to have lived in this country for 14 consecutive years. So in other words, you're born here, you grow up, you you live abroad, you do other things, and then you come back. As long as you've been here for 14 consecutive years, you can run for president. 35 years old, natural born citizen, living here in the U.S. for 14 consecutive years. So that's the Q in Q poor. The P uh, stands for powers. What are the powers of the president? What can a president do? Uh, one of the things that I would like to, there, there's a couple different things that we could talk about. I think let's just pull uh, number one, the president his main power is that of enforcing law. So therefore, law enforcement or enforcing laws would be the main power of the president. 
But how is this accomplished? One of the ways this is accomplished is through something called executive orders. Um, that's another power of the, that the president has. Executive orders are something we're going to talk about later in this module, but essentially what they are are their laws that the president creates without having to go through Congress. Uh, it's a pretty big power that the president has. It, it's, it's completely in line with the notion of veto power, which is also a power the president has. The president, 535 people in Congress could all agree on one thing, and one person, the president, can say, no, we're not doing that. And that is the veto power the president has. It's an amazing power. Uh, another power the president has, they select Supreme Court justices. Um, they choose who they want, and then those people have to go through confirmation hearings through the Senate, which is a check on that power. But think about this for a minute. If you get to choose a position uh, that is for life, once a judge becomes a judge, they are a judge for life, or they can quit, or they can be impeached. But the point I'm trying to make is that's a pretty big power. You're putting someone in a position who's going to be interpreting law for 20 to 30 years in this country. Uh, if you take our last president, Mr. Trump, he was able to choose three Supreme Court judges. It's a pretty big deal if you think about it. Uh, so, again, powers of the president, what, what they can, what they can't do. I mean, those are some things that presidents actually have the power to do. Um, the, the O, you will not find the word obligations. Um, you won't find that in... The Constitution. It's kind of a word I more or less made up as I inferred what Section 3 is talking about, which is basically this. While presidents have the power to do certain things, there's some things that they are supposed to do but don't necessarily have to do. In other words, the president has to enforce the law. What the president should do but doesn't have to do, what they're obligated to do, is speak to the people, um, give interviews, give speeches. You know, show up at times of crisis in our country and and talk to pe you know talk people through it. Um, they're supposed to be delivering things like the State of the Union address, all things that they are supposed to do but don't necessarily have to do. Um, again, something as big as just giving interviews and press conferences and informing the people of what's going on, they don't have to do that. I mean, think about that for one second. They don't have to, but they probably should. And then finally, the last part of QPOR, which would be removal, the R, removal. Um, remember, removal or impeachment does not mean removal. Impeachment is the first step towards removal. And uh, what are some reasons why a president could be removed from office? Um, the Again, the Constitution is pretty vague. It says high crimes and misdemeanors. Treason, bribery, high crimes, misdemeanors. Doesn't go into any further explanation. What we do know, according to Article 1, only the House of Reps can impeach someone. Once they've been impeached, then the Senate performs a trial. And it will be that trial that determines whether or not this person is actually going to be removed. So you have qualifications, powers, obligations, and removal. QPOR. Start putting that in your head, the acronym. Uh, just a couple other things that I would like for us to be thinking about as we approach this question. Um... What is the job of the president? I want you to be aware, just kind of put this in the in the back of your head, the executive branch employs 500,000 people. Uh, so it's a very large branch of the government. Uh, 500,000 people, it's split up between the presidency, the vice presidency, and then there's 15 cabinets uh, that the president has. And then also, on top of those 15 cabinet members, obviously they're all going to have a staff that live you know, in their department under them, there's also an untold number of presidential advisors. And advisors can be hired on for any amount of time. They, they go through very little oversight. Uh, the, the cabinets of the president have to be, again, they have to go through the Senate and they have to be confirmed. And so there's a check on that power. Advisors, not so. They can, they can choose anyone they'd like to advise them to be in their official circle. Um, and there's little to no oversight that goes with that. <clears throat> Last little bit here. Uh, what is the job of the president? What is the role? I mean, how would you define it? I've come up with a few here that I think are very important. You obviously could come up with untold numbers. Uh, chief of state would be one job. 
uh, we when when the president's acting as the chief of state, they're the ceremonial head of the country. Um, you know, maybe maybe a dignitary has been killed. They would speak up, give a speech, console the other countries involved. Ceremonial head of the United States. You have the chief executive as they're acting as the chief executive. They're the head of the executive branch, giving them the authority to execute all laws in this country. Chief citizen. Um, I'm sure most of you in your head, what's the job of the president? You think, well, this person's supposed to be representing the rest of us. So we consider this role or job chief citizen of the United States. Uh, then we have commander in chief. Uh, when the president's acting in this role, they are leading the military and deciding uh, what action the military is going to take, whether it be at home or abroad. And then finally, another one I came up with, chief diplomat, the architect of foreign policy. When we sign treaties with other countries or when we go to war or just, or just when we're diplomatic with other countries, we talk with them. It's usually the president's job to do that as the chief citizen, chief representative, um, and the commander in chief. So a few roles there, a few jobs of the president. I'm sure you can think of more. Uh, keep rocking. Executive branch, Article 2. That's what we're talking this week. Hang in there with me. Uh, getting real close to wrapping this class up. If you have any questions, hit me up. You know where I'm at. Have a good day.